Good morning. Happy Good Sabbath. Morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Right, going. Good to see everyone here. How many of y'all want your feet washed? Amen. All of us, right? I mean, what does that mean exactly? To wash, have your feet washed. What does that mean to us? Humility. Humility, okay. Humility is one. Uh, we're taught to, that our master, we're not greater than our master. And, and do you know, when Jesus got down on his knees, remember he said, I have chosen you twelve and one of you is a devil. And even when he knew Judas had betrayed him, even at, he knew ahead of time Judas had already sold him out. And he still got down on his knees in front of Judas. And he washed his feet. He didn't expose Judas to the whole crowd, did he? He didn't call him out and say, you have sold me out. He didn't, he didn't announce. He just said, one of y'all is still not clean. That's the only thing he said. Can you imagine the 12 disciples standing there looking at each other? One of us isn't clean. I don't know which one it is. I know it's not me. <laughs> you know, but you know what? The one that wasn't clean, Christ, when he got down on his knees and he washed his feet, he still would have forgiven him. He still would have forgiven him if he would have accepted him. What did Judas do? He hardened his heart. He hardened his heart. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. Before we start today's sermon, let's go to prayer. Holy Father, we ask that Your presence be here. Your Holy Spirit in the spirit of your beautiful son, along with your angels. Surround us, protect us, open our minds, expand our thoughts, and bring us into a closer, more meaningful relationship with you, Holy Father. In Jesus' name we pray, let your words be heard. Amen. Amen. Turn with me in your Bibles to Ezekiel 16. Let's open with Ezekiel 16, 6. And when I passed by thee, and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee, When thou wast in thy blood, live. Yea, I said unto thee, When thou wast in thy blood, live. How many of us have blood on our hands? All of us. All of us. We're all, all guilty. We're all guilty. Verse 7. I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field. And thou hast increased and waxing great, and thou art come to excellent ornaments. Thy breasts are fashioned, and thine hair is grown, whereas thou wast naked and bare. Are we naked, blind, and poor? Right? Now, what does is, what is Jesus say first before the bride is covered with ornaments? Live. Isn't that what He says? He says live. How many people are dead walking around today? You know, there's a lot of people that are dead to what? To Christ, because they are in their blood, sin, right? Verse 8, Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of what? Love. Y'all remember in the book of Revelation, Jesus scolds the church and says, Because you have left your first love. Remember the scolding He gives the church? What was the first love? What attracted you? Christ. Christ, the love of God. It's grace. Grace. The word of grace, this word grace means unmerited love. We didn't earn it. We didn't deserve it. It was a gift to us. Amen. The free gift of His Son who He sent. You see where I'm going with this? He sent His Son because He loved us. 
Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was a time of love, and I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. How many of y'all want your nakedness covered? Amen. And I swear unto thee and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou becamest mine. Isn't that beautiful words? Amen. How many of y'all want to belong to Christ? Hallelujah. All of us. Amen. So we can see here a beautiful love story. Y'all see this love story? So he takes his bride. He sees her in her own blood. He washes her. How does he wash her? His blood. He has to wash her with water. Right? Has to clean her up. And then he says what? Unless you be born of the water and of the Spirit. Spirit. You will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. He washes her with water. He cleans her. And then he says to this bride, what? Live. Let's do a recap. Over the past several weeks, we've been preaching on what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? All right. And what did we say? Hearing. There's, there's five things here. I'm going to run through them. Hearing, believing, uh, repentance, confession, baptism. Hearing, believing, repentance, confession, baptism. You hear the Word of God, you believe. I said, believe slash obey. Pistis pistuo. Right. The, the noun, the verb. It's faith with works. Your whole faith is believing, is hearing, and believing and obeying. That's faith. If you heard it, you believed it, and when you believed it, you obeyed it, that's your faith being made perfect by works. We're not saved by works. We perform works because we are saved. Amen. Amen. All right, this is, you see where I'm going with this. We've preached on this over the past several weeks. And then from there, when your heart comes under conviction, is it my job to convict y'all? No. no. Is it your job to convict the world? No. No, no it is not. We cannot convict anybody of anything. We've been given a position of sharing the gospel and sharing the gospel only. We can't convict the hearts. Who convicts the hearts? God, God. God the Holy Spirit. Now, this, this church is one mind. I can see it already. So God does the convicting of hearts. So we hear, we believe, we obey, we repent, and then what comes next? Baptism. No, we skip something. Come on. Confession. Baptism is an outward showing of an inward change. But let's step back here a little bit. One believeth in the heart unto righteousness, and confession is made with the lips unto salvation. salvation. So there's your first step in an outward showing. Jesus says, those who would deny him, he will also deny before his father. Are y'all brave enough to confess with your lips the Lord Jesus Christ that he came, he was sent by the Father? He was crucified on the cross. He died. The Father resurrected Him and He ascended back to heaven to be by the right hand of the Father. Y'all believe that? Yes. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Alright, so we confess this with the lips. That's your first step in an outward showing. God wants to hear you audibly. He wants that relationship. The Son of God wants that relationship. As a matter of fact, no man come unto the Father unless it be by Christ. Hallelujah. We yes. have to be in Christ. Christ is the bridegroom. You know, in the uh, and I'm getting off my sermon a little bit, but I want to share this because it's so beautiful. In the Old Testament, the Jewish marriage, the, the, hus the husband-to-be would take a cup of the most costly wine to his bride-to-be, and he would set it before, and he would have what they called a ketubah written out, and he would lay that ketubah before his bride, and he would say, and it would have all his conditions. It would have all his what? Conditions. Hey, can y'all imagine, guys, if you present your to be wise with conditions, what she would say ahead of time? You set a cup of wine in front of her and you put a whole contract out front. Read that contract, please. Thank it over. No make no choices, but when you sip of that wine, you're mine. The betrothal was set. That was the Jewish tradition. And on that paper of all those conditions of what they called a ketubah contract, it also came with promises. It wasn't just conditions only, it was also with promises. So it was his conditions, his contract, with his promises. Y'all find all this in the Old Testament. Message me later if you want to know where to find it, and I'll take you there and show it to you. So what does Jesus do for us? 
Who's the schoolmaster that led you to Christ? Let me tell you what the schoolmaster is. All right, let me back up. What did Solomon say? What, what did uh, David write? What did, by, the, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, they wrote, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom dwelleth with prudence, brother. That's right. When you said knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And who has made our wisdom for us? Jesus. Jesus. Now, the fear of the Lord in the Bible in Hebrew means moral reverence. If you have fear of God, are you giving God reverence? You're going to show moral reverence, right? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the fear of the Lord is beginning. So the schoolmaster is his ketubah contract. Christ has laid out his ketubah in front of us. He says, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't, don't drink of the wine yet. Just, I love stories. He says, don't, don't drink of the wine yet. He said, read my contract. Study it. Think it over. He says, my, my, this is my conditions. This is my character. This is who I am. This is what I'm about. Before you enter into marriage with me. Look it over. He says, when you agree to these things, come back, sip of the wine, and the betrothal will be set. The schoolmaster leads us to Christ. And when you're found in the faith in Christ, you're no longer under the schoolmaster. But you're in Christ. You see where I just went? That's righteousness by faith. Say, by grace through faith. Amen. And after you're saved, you walk according to what you agree to. Not because you were required to do so. What? To be saved. Let me tell you, this seal of God isn't found in the hands. <laughs> it's only found in the forehead. Hands represent the works, and the forehead is what you believe. We're only saved by grace through faith. So the five things are hearing, believing, slash obeying, repentance, confession, baptism. So we have an outward showing of an inward change that brings us to where we're at now. Baptism. Christ says He will wash us. When he washed those disciples' feet, what was it in representation to? It was their walk. Think about it. If I had washed your feet, you're clean all over. Amen. It's their walk that he was cleansing. Peter says, oh Lord. Well, I won't go there. We'll read it in a little bit. Turn with me to Galatians 3, chapter 22. Or chapter 3, verse 22. I said, that's my dyslexia kicking in every now and then. But the Scripture hath concluded that we're all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that what? Believe. believe. That believe. That's your faith. But before faith came, we were kept under what? The law. Is this what I just said about that Ketubah contract? The schoolmaster that brought us to Christ? I just read it. We're reading it out. This is just what I was just talking about. But before faith came, before faith came, before what came? Faith. faith. Before faith came, we were kept under the fear of the Lord. Under the law. Shut up unto the faith. By the way, is the law the strength of sin? Is the law the strength of sin? Yes. The law is the character of God. It's as broad as the universe. It's circular. You break one, you break them all. But it's also, when you look into the law, does it measure me? Is it the measuring rod of my sin? Yes, it is. It's the strength of sin. It's a way of measuring also, of comparing. It's judging yourselves. Shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Is it going to be revealed afterwards? Yes. Yes. yes, it is. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. There it is. Y'all read it right from the Bible, didn't you? Yeah. That we might be justified by what? Faith. Faith. Will faith come? If you enter into that ketubah contract, into that betrothal with Jesus, will your faith come? Yes. 
Trust and obey. Trust and obey. Verse 25. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Why is that? How is it that yeah, we're no longer under the schoolmaster because we are performing works of love. We're giving that moral reverence because we have fallen in love. How many of y'all have fallen in love? We got one person in here falling in love with Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe I should ask that question again. How many of y'all have fallen in love with Jesus? Amen. All right, we're getting a little bit better. It's warming up in here. <laughs> For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on what? Put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Does that make us all equal in Christ Jesus? Yes. yes. Amen. Under yes. salvation? And if you be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed, or y'all spiritual Israel, yes. Yes. and heirs according to the promise. What promise? Yes. The, promise. the promise that was given to Abraham. Men of old looked forward to what was to come, the cross that came. King David wrote about it. You know when King David transgressed God's law by looking up on Bathsheba, in the water bathing herself and then he committed adultery with one of his mighty men's wives. If he had been out there fighting with his soldiers, would that have happened? No. 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 God had appointed King David his job. He sent his soldiers. He stayed behind. He let his eyes wander. The lust of the eyes caused his downfall. In order for him to be saved, he was shown the cross of Christ. Remember, he wrote about the yes. perfect crucifixion of Christ. Christ yes. came. When he got down in sackcloth and ashes and begged the Lord not to remove his spirit from him, Jesus came to him. He said, let me tell you about the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And then King David wrote about the Roman crucifixion, which had not even been invented yet. It would be another 12, 1800 years before the crucifixion even became invented. Right. That's amazing to me. But God knows all things. And He reveals it to His Son, and His Son makes it known to His prophets, and they share it with us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we receive the promise of Abraham, don't we? Baptism symbolizes an outward showing of an inward change. It's also a commitment to live obediently to who? God. Christ. Yeah. You know what baptism represents for me in my mind? Let me tell you this. The angels... Now, let me back up. There's only one Son in all the universe that is brought forth, begotten of the Father. Who is that? Jesus Christ. Jesus. Now, there's many sons in the universe, created sons. That would be the... Angels. Angels. There's going to be many children adopt, uh, by adoption. How y'all like that? Are y'all children of adoption? Yes. That's how we are welcomed into God's citizen, uh, into His kingdom as citizens, is by adoption. Baptism is also a representation of the spirit of adoption. The spirit of adoption for us. Yeah. For us. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Turn with me to Romans 8, 13. For if you live after the flesh, you shall what? Die. You know, something hit me this morning. A thought hit me. Are these bodies going to go back to this earth? And our death, are these bodies going back to this earth? Yes. Yes. yes, it is. It came from the earth, it's going back to the earth. Is this earth under a curse? Yes. Do y'all want to resurrect in these same old decrepit, corrupted, sin filled bodies? No, I love what my wife, I'm going to share it again. I love that. She says, When I die, I want to be, I want to be cremated. I said, Why, baby? 
She said, then I can be assured that God's going to give me a new body. I said, me too. I want to be cremated too. I love that. These bodies are going back to the earth. They're not going up to heaven. Right. So we're going to be given new, new bodies. So this flesh is corrupted. It's of the earth. It's under the curse. Let's see, we are at 8.13. 8.13. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you, through the Spirit, whose Spirit? God. Do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. What do you have to do to the deeds of the body through the Spirit? Mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Sons of God. Sons of God. Yeah. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. 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 That's it. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Who are you crying, Father, to? God. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then we are the heirs, heirs of God. And joint heirs, and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And joint heirs with who? Christ. Christ. So you're the children of God. Amen. And joint heirs with Jesus Christ. His Son. God is reconciled. Let me tell you all. God is reconciling the whole world to Himself through His Son. Through His Son. We don't come to the Father unless it be through Jesus Christ. For I reckon, verse 18, well, I'm going to go back to verse 17, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. What does that mean, suffer with Him? What if I told you baptism? Oh, do you all know there's different types of baptism? Yes. Yeah. They had the baptism of John the Baptist. What kind of baptism was that? Baptism of water. Baptism of water unto repentance. Then we had the baptism of Christ, which opened the spiritual kingdom before us. The baptism of salvation. We had the baptism of Moses, which destroyed Pharaoh's army. We had the baptism of fire and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes. It goes, I mean, I think there's total six or seven baptisms yes. referred to in the Bible here. But this baptism, if we suffer with Christ, baptism by the water and by the blood. Water and blood. Yes. Lest you be born of the water and of the blood, water and of the Spirit, we will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Water Amen. is of the flesh. It's an outward showing. The Spirit is an inward change, of an, out, uh, an outward showing of an inward change. That's Christ's Spirit in us. Walking as He walked. Walking in the Spirit that has made us to be alive with Him. Isn't it? Is this beautiful? Am I the only one who finds this beautiful? Or? No, this is very beautiful. It is. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. When we reach heaven, and somebody says, tell me what you went through on earth, and you can see heaven for yourself, I would, I would almost contemplate the thought that it won't be worth mentioning. What we went through here. Right. It won't be worth mentioning. Right. It's cheap enough. Wow. Heaven. Heaven is cheap enough. For us. How much are we willing to sacrifice? Water baptism. Water baptism, I want to be very clear on this, does not save us. No. no. I'm going to tell you, there's a bunch of sinners that go into baptism. They get wet, and they come out wet sinners. <laughs> they go in, get wet, and they come out. They were sinners before they went in, they came out wet sinners. And, and what I'm saying is, did they change? Or they walk, when you're found in Christ, Christ covers you. Does He spread His skirt over you? Does He give you new or, uh, ornaments? Does He give you a new covering? So when you stand before His Father and His Father's looking upon you, 
And Christ is beside you. Remember that little story I told last week about that mean fella standing over his arms folded? Yeah. Saying, you're not coming in here. That's the law. Paul well, saying, you ain't coming in here. Jesus is standing over here. Hey, my child, come over here. Come, come, come. Come on. And as soon as you, you run into his arms and he wraps that robe of righteousness around you, this big mean guy over here that's the law, Oh, I see. Yeah, y'all come on in. Come on in. I was mistaken. Y'all come on in. There's nothing good in me. There's nothing good in me. Except for Christ. Amen. 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 And that's what's going to get us in the heaven. You have to stay focused on Jesus Christ. We are saved through by grace through faith. Have you ever thought about that? By grace, By grace. through faith. Okay. You'll find that in Ephesians 2, 8-9. Ephesians 2, 8-9. So let's turn there. Ephesians 2, verse 8. <clears throat> For by grace. Now I'm going to tell you all what this word grace means. Again, a lot of people don't know what words mean anymore. They don't know the meaning of words. Grace is. The definition of grace is. un. Merited love. There's your definition. Unmerited love. What does that word merited mean? You didn't earn it. We didn't deserve it. I didn't earn it. It was given to me. For by grace are you what? Saved through faith. Faith come by hearing. Hearings of the word of God. I said we hear it. We believe it and we obey it. And then we repent of our sins. I said there was two types of repentance. Let's continue on with our reading here. And that not of yourselves. Did we earn it? No. no. It is a gift, the gift of who? God. 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 The Father of Jesus, who loved us and sent his only son. John 3:16. <coughs> So, right here, let me ask y'all something. Does Jesus command us to be baptized? Yes. Yes. We've got one person here who knows the answer. <laughs> yes. He commanded it. Be sure to turn on me to Matthew chapter 28. I'm going to show y'all something. Now, some people... Hey, Darren, you just keep on following the Lord, brother. He'll bring I you. I sure will. He'll bring you. I sure will. Amen. Amen. Verse 20, uh, chapter 28, verse 19. Some people say this is an added text that has been slightly changed, but I'm going to read it to you. All right, and I will tell you, this is the only verse in our entire Bible that says to be baptized into the family of. All the other verses that talk about baptism says to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is that a name? Jesus Christ? Yes. Yes, yes it is. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of... Now, y'all tell me if this is proper names. The Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Is there any proper names here? You know what he's saying? Be baptized into the family of... God. Amen. And the only way we can do that is to be baptized in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And y'all remember Paul actually uh, rebukes some of the disciples. He said, I oh, thank God I baptized none of you except uh, 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 Caius and another one. He said, the less any of you say you were baptized into the name of Paul. Were they baptized? Or were any of these disciples baptizing people into their own names? No. 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 They were baptizing people into the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. So here Jesus has commanded them to go and baptize all people into the family of God. And that's exactly what this means. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have what? Commanded you. Commanded you. And lo, listen to this, I am with you always. always. Oh, if you all know what Jesus in the flesh is our high priest in the kingdom of heaven, he is also in the spirit, the minister of his church on earth. Yeah, amen. Amen. 
Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. world. Even to the end. Water baptism is for believers, not for people who want to continue on living in sin. Y'all agree with that? Amen. Amen. Water baptism is for believers. We are sinners in need of salvation. Romans 3.23 Are we sinners in need of salvation? Yes. Yes, we are. And the Bible tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Verse 23. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all sinners. We're all in need of salvation through faith by grace in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Right? Amen. Amen. So, we believe that Christ was sent by the Father. Uh, Philippians chapter 2 tells us that He condescended to this planet. He set aside His royal robes and His crown and He came a body thou hast prepared for me. You know why Jesus spoke those words? Why those words are in the Bible? Because the Gnostic believed that the Spirit of Christ didn't come into the uh, man that was created as a body until the baptism of John. Is that what the Bible teaches? No. No, it does not. And that His Spirit left Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. That's what the Gnostics teach. The Bible says that a body was prepared for Him. A body was prepared for Him. He came. He was sent from God to this earth. He came. He lived. By the way, the Gospel of Christ. We behold Christ in His three and a half years of ministry. The faith of Jesus. Look at it sometimes. How He fought against the devil in the wilderness. How He prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. How He endured the torturous treatment of the cross at Golgotha. There's the Gospel of Christ. How about the Mount of Blessings? How about the greatest sermon ever preached? Matthew chapter 5. You know, we should be studying the life of Christ because that is your faith. That's our faith. That's His Spirit. These words in John 6, 62, I think. These words I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, there is no life in you. That's the waters of salvation and the bread of life for us. That's our faith. That's our faith. So we believe and we confess. We believe these things. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. I declare unto you the what? Gospel. The gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. How are you going to stand? By which also you are what? Saved. Saved through your faith. If you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. In other words, you, you make it void. Vanity. Useless. You harden your heart. That's what this is saying. Like Judas. Like Pharaoh. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, according to the Old Testament. That's their Scriptures. Then, and that He was buried. He fulfilled 1,200 plus prophecies. 300 plus just on the burial, crucifixion, burial, and resurrection. He rose again on the third day according to the Scriptures. Turn with me to 1 Peter 1, 3 through 5. Well, actually, if y'all go, don't turn here. Hebrews 6, verse 1 talks about the doctrine of Christ being the first doctrine of our faith. Amen. The doctrine of Christ. First doctrine of our faith. 1 Peter 1, 3 through 5. 1 Peter 1, 3 through 5.
Blessed be the God and Father. Now, I'm going to ask you all a question. Let me, let me read this again. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Did that say the God? Does this say God the Father? I'm sorry, I can't hear you all. No. Does it say God our Father? No. God. Does it say God and Father? Yes. Of who? Jesus Christ. So the Father is also Jesus is God, and you'll find that in Hebrews chapter 1 and Philippians chapter 2. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Did I say Jesus is any less God? Yeah. No, I did not. Yeah. No. no. Jesus is also our God. He's, he's God by nature, and He's God through an exalted position. Amen. Two ways. Amen. Amen. So he is not any less than God because God has made His Son to be equal with them. And as a matter of fact, His Son was already by nature equal with His Father. Amen. Right. But He is not the God and He's not the Father. So just to clear that up, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Are y'all going to resurrect with Christ? Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to read. To an inheritance incorruptible. We spoke about that a minute ago. And undefiled. That's the body I want. And that fadeth not away. It's forever. It's going to be eternal. Reserved in heaven for you. Hope to see y'all there. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hope to find myself there with you too. <laughs> Amen. Hey, Paul says this is a race of endurance. Endurance. We have to run this race. Who are kept by the power of God through faith and the salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. The power of God. The power of God. Do y'all know there's seven horns on the slain lamb in the book of Revelation? Yes. And they represent power. Horn represents power. There are seven eyes on the slain that were placed on the slain lamb who had seven horns. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. We'll cover that sometime. Mm -hmm. That's just a little to whet your appetite if you're interested. Mm -hmm. Let's talk more about baptism. Let's go with me to uh, Romans chapter 6. Go with me to Romans chapter 6. I want to cover this. Go to me to verse 3. Mm -hmm. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, into who? Jesus Christ. Into the family of God, Jesus Christ. By the way, in the name of, in Matthew chapter 20, verse 19, it says baptize them in the name of. It means in the authority of this family. Godhead means divinity. You have God who is the fullness of of divinity bodily, and then you have Christ who is the fullness of divinity manifested, and then you have the Holy Spirit who comes to us in the fullness of the Godhead. Is that too much? So, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, it tells us that we should be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's in the authority of this family. And you can only come to God through who? Jesus Christ. Christ. So whose name are you literally proper now? Whose name are you being baptized into? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus. Know you not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into His death? It's an outward joy of an inward change. Therefore, we are buried with Him by what? Baptism, Baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of who? He was raised. Who raised Jesus from the dead? God. God raised Jesus from the dead. And here, the Bible tells us, God is the Father who raised Jesus from the dead. As Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of His death. Is that the literal death? Yes. Is this the literal death? Or does the Bible tell me it's the likeness? The likeness. All right, so baptism is symbolic of His death for us. 
We yeah. shall be also in the likeness of what? Resurrection. His resurrection. resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, yeah. that the body of this sin might be destroyed, and henceforth we should not serve what? Sin. Yeah. Sin. I meditate on God's laws. I don't wish to serve sin in any way, shape, or form. Now, the law itself does not save me. I am saved by grace through faith. But because I love my Lord, I desire to walk as He walked. I study His life. This is building my faith. I don't want to stop at just justification. I want to move on to sanctification. I want to be righteous unto holiness like God commands us to be. Hallelujah. That's what we want to strive for. So many people want to complain about this or complain about that or just do away. You know what? In the Pharisees' days, when Jesus came, they said, we don't need the Son of God. We got the law. That's what they said. And they killed Him. You know what people are saying today? We don't need the law. We got Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God likes a just way, brothers and sisters. And the Bible is very clear on this. A just way. Don't be overly wise. And don't be too righteous. You see where I went? Yep. You got the demons of righteousness. You got the demons of the uh, self-indulgence. The uh, carnal liberalism of self-indulgence, I guess is what I should say. You got demons on both sides. God says, I like a just way. I like a just way. So, baptism represents going to death with Christ. What does that mean to crucify the old man? There's seven things that God hates. Do y'all know there's seven stations in the sanctuary? Do y'all know that God's way is in the sanctuary? Amen. Amen. All right. Do you know everywhere Christ was wounded on the cross for is in the sanctuary? All seven locations. It's a walk with Christ. Justification, sanctification, glorification. It's a walk with Christ. He is our high priest leading us through the sanctuary, making our peace between us and God. Amen. Making us presentable. Amen. And those seven things, God says, six of me hates, but when you do all seven, you become a total abomination. Do you know the things that God said He hated everywhere on that cross? A proud look. Was Jesus, wound? Was Jesus wounded in the forehead? Yes. 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 A lying tongue. Did His tongue cling to the roof of His mouth? Hands that shed innocent blood. Y'all can find this in, in Proverbs 6 and Proverbs 8. Hands that shed innocent blood. Was his hands nailed to the cross? Yes. yes. Feet that be swift to run to mischief. Were they nailed? Yes. I can go on. All the way from the altar sacrifice to the brass labor right up to his heart. Did his heart explode in his chest? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. What poor whiff came from his side? Blood and water. What did God take from Adam's side? A rib. Who was created? The wife. Right? He created them, male and female. He created man. Husband and wife. When Christ was on that cross and they opened up his side, what came out? Blood and water. Unless you be born of the... Spirit. Unless you be born of the blood and of the water... You will not enter the kingdom of heaven. What's born when his side was open, when he was put into a deep sleep, like the first Adam. His church. His church. The second Eve. The bride. We're born. Write your questions down. So, go ahead. The scriptures does says say that lest ye enter through me, you shall not see heaven. Amen. That is Jesus speaking. Yes, yes, sir. That is correct. Amen to that. He Amen. is the gate to heaven. He is the gate. And that's at the door. And the door, and yes. I, I can share something on that since you brought it up. The door. He says, I am the door. Amen. And he opens the way into, and I'm going to be symbolic now, the sanctuary for us to walk that walk through to be presentable before God. Amen. On that front gate, there are four pillars, and then there's four colors on the front curtain. Mm -hmm. There was a, and I'm not, I'm not going to go into great detail, but they represent the four Gospels. 
the four gospel. They also represent the four uh, characteristic, major characteristics of our Lord. Right. And then God's righteousness surrounds the whole thing. It's a father-son relationship. Amen. All the way. Yes. All the way. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. That's beautiful. So y'all kind of seeing a glimpse of what's happening here, right? I'm not gonna. I was gonna take you somewhere else and show you something, but we're not gonna go there right now. Baptism is not a prerequisite to enter the kingdom of heaven, is it? Even though Christ commanded it. What about those people who are bedridden, who can't get out of bed to be baptized? Uh, he, what does he tell John? He says. He comes to John. He says, baptize me. John's, John doesn't argue. He's very careful, but he wrestles with the Lord a little bit. Oh, Lord, I, I have need to be baptized of Thee. I, and he even claimed, I'm not worthy to unloose even the, the shoelaces of Your shoes. And Jesus says, even so, baptize me that all righteousness shall be fulfilled. The thief on the cross, there was two thieves, one on both sides of him. And, and I always liked it. Say this, sheep on the right, goats on the left. I don't know. And the Bible don't tell us. But if I had to guess, the good thief was on the right, the bad thief was on the left. I mean, I don't know why that just comes to my mind, but sheep on the right, goats on the left. But anyway, so you had this one thief that recognized that Jesus was in fact the Messiah while he was hanging on the cross. Hanging on the cross. Tied. Like tight. Tied. He confessed. And he confessed and he admitted and he accepted Christ. And what did Jesus say to him? You'll find this in Luke 23, 39 through 43. He says, Because of your faith you shall enter with me this day in heaven. Well, what he says is, let's go to let's go there real quick. 2339. Let's go to Luke 2339. I want to point something out here. One of the male factors which hang. Now I'm gonna go down. Let's go to verse 43. And Jesus said unto him, Truly I say unto you, I say unto thee. Now listen to this. Punctuation marks did not exist when the Hebrew was written. There's a comma in here. Alright, now I want you to hear it. I'm going to read it the way it reads. Truly I say unto you, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Now I have a question for y'all. Did he go to paradise that day? No. 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 Did Jesus go to paradise that day? No. no. Alright, is he saying, truly I tell you today, or truly I say unto you, today you will be with me in paradise. Is that what he's saying? Alright, now let's move the comma to the other side of today. It's a huge difference. Listen to this. Listen to this. And why can I say this? I'll tell you why. Because when he was resurrected and Mary come running to him, he says, oh, don't touch me. For I have not yet ascended to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Have you been to heaven yet? No. 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 So I can honestly say that they got a comma in the wrong place. Truly I say unto you today, come, you will be with me in paradise. Did that make a difference? Yes. Hey, take your little pens and move your comma to the other side of today and you'll have it right. <laughs> That's in case anybody didn't know that. Christ didn't resurrect that day straight into the kingdom of heaven. He laid in the tomb. And he even told Mary he had not yet what? Ascended. Ascended. Now, I want to go back to this. The thief on the cross. He said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Now I have a question. Was he baptized? No. He was tied to a cross. Yes. And when sunset was almost upon them, when the Sabbath was almost upon them, they came and broke the thieves' legs. Ooh. Didn't they? Yes. But the prophecies of King David 1,200 years earlier said that the, the Lamb of God's legs, bones, would never be broken. They, they came to him with the big wood mallet and they said he was already dead. And he reported... He's already dead. He said, stick a spear in his side. Make sure he's dead. And that's what they did. They stuck a spear in his side. Even though he wasn't baptized, is he going to be in heaven with Jesus? Yes. Yes. For all you people who cannot get out of bed that are bedridden, for everyone who is unable 
to do it. Does Jesus fulfill it for them? Yes. yes. Amen. Yes, He does. Yes, He does. So He does command it, and if you're able, He says do it. Yeah. But if you're not able, He says just bring your heart to me, confess. It. That's why there's two outward showings of an inward change. And for those who can't speak it, that might be mute, God makes way. He hears the thoughts. He hears the heart. Amen. They have a pencil and paper. They can write it down. Letter form. Let's go to prayer. Holy Father, I thank You for today. I ask that You continue to be with us and bless us with Your knowledge. Grant us understanding. Continue to counsel us. Bring us into a deeper understanding, Holy Father. Give us wisdom, knowledge. Mainly we need grace and strength, Lord. Grace and strength. That's what we really pray for for our church. Give us grace and strength. Watch over us. Let your angels be around us. Bring us and lead us. We love you with all of our hearts, souls, minds, and strength. I pray for everyone here today, Lord, that when they go home, that your presence will be there to convict their hearts, open their minds, and draw them in to a closer relationship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I don't know exactly how sweet heaven will be. I don't know what beauty or what glory I'll see when I see heaven. I don't know what I'll behold that morning divine. I only know for sure that heaven's really gonna shine. It's gonna shine. It's gonna shine. It's gonna shine. It's gonna shine. Oh, yeah. I don't know how wide will be that city so fair. I don't even know how many saints will be there. I don't know how high will be that mansion of mine. I only know for sure that heaven's really gonna shine. It's gonna shine. It's gonna shine.